guide to a humble revolution. And I don't know if you guys many took part of the Oakland Occupy, the encampment when it was here, or some of the, the general assemblies that happened. And I was talking to a brother named Adul uh, a couple of minutes ago. Of I don't know if it was you know just because uh, we as communities of color um, didn't pull hard enough, or it was because we didn't let. But I, I did see some of the leadership on the Oakland Occupy was really elitist, and also it was really white. You know, I know it's like three quarters of the folks who were running the day was white, right? So I know Oakland is more diversified than that, right? We have so many culture here in Oakland. So it was kind of sad to see the, the lack of representations among people of color here in Oakland. And another thing that the, 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 uh, the uh, people of color and queer people of color group in caucus came through was, since the beginning, when the, uh, some of the Ohlone force came out of here, they call it decol decolonized Oakland, right? And just suddenly, uh, like my sister Marty was saying, as soon as the, the Native American folks left, like everything went back to like Occupy Oakland and, and, and the lack of respect, right? They came and, and blessed her and gave the support. Well, so one of the things that um, the, a lot of the Occupy movements are missing, as my brother Mutiado said, is not only the fact that Unfortunately, um, there isn't a real recognition or an inclusion of the peoples and the struggles that came before us. There isn't necessarily an understanding of the people that came before us. So one of the ideas was to share her stories of genocide, to ground this movement in a change uh, that it is, because it's going to keep going, and that's a beautiful thing, but to make it a truly inclusive space for the people who aren't here. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Teresa Molina, yo soy Teresa Molina, eh, perdón, reportera de prensa pobre, mujer mexicana, madre de cinco hijos, vivo en San Francisco y lucho cada día para sobrevivir. Yo tengo que vivir día a día la discriminación y el racismo en, lo, en los trabajos, en la vivienda y en todos lados por ser inmigrante. Vivo con estrés de que me quiten el trabajo, la vivienda o de que me deporten a un amigo o miembro de mi familia. Solo el hecho de pensar que puedo perder mi trabajo y que puedo quedar desalojada me aterroriza y tengo que aguantar y seguir luchando. Yo soy Teresa, reportera de Prensa Pobre, Voces de Inmigrantes en Resistencia y esta es mi I am Teresa, a Mexican woman, a mother of five. I live in San Francisco and struggle every day in order to survive. Every day I have to live experiencing discrimination and racism at the workplace, at the home, and everywhere just for being an immigrant. I live under stress when they take my job, my home, or they deport a friend or a family member. I'm just thinking about losing my job and getting evicted all the time. It terrifies me that I have to hang and keep on fighting. I am Teresa, I reported with both the Migrantes and Resistencias con Prensa Pobre, Paul Magazine. Y esta es mi historia. Ow. This is my story. Uh, one of our other mama scholars, poverty scholars, and amazing warriors, Cuinande. Ow! Ow! This poem is out to all the mamas out there today. We're going to take a time out and remember the Let's mothers go. of the universe. Because if it wasn't for the women, we would not be here. If it wasn't for Mama D, there would not be no poor magazine, it would not be no tiny. If it wasn't for me, it wouldn't be them. If it wasn't for my mom and my great grandma and my grandmother, it wouldn't be me. So this goes out to the mamas, and it's called Mama. And I wrote this poem when all the tyranny, the oppression, and all the racism and classism and hating on people that are in poverty, took the life of my mother and I wrote this and dedicated to her and all the other mamas out there who had lost their lives in the struggle. Mama, you're the first queen in my life, the first revolutionary who reared me right. As we stand in the final hours, I pray to Allah for the strength to carry on this fight. I can't lose you now, mama, you all I got. This whole world is against me. Our strength melted up their pot. With all the other leaders gone, it's hard to accept the loss of my primary leader. Now I'll be forced to carry on. Born with two strikes, being black and being a woman. Get no respect whatsoever, regardless if I am womb of man. Mama, I seen a panther walking, stalking, with Islam being her shiny coat. This sister was bad and had everybody whispering and talking. She felt stuff before it happened and stayed sharp upon her.
Uh, disability scholar is part of the book, and he's going to speak a few words of scholarship. Listen up. Ow! A hospital that is known as Sutter kicked out 200 seniors to build office space for rich doctors Whoa! in San Francisco. And here in Oakland, where there's 20,000 abandoned units, there are say uh, 5,000 elders on the streets. It's about time we get up and break the locks on the doors that we been forced to live. It's better to die on your feet than to live a life as a slave. I don't know how we can stand here or camp here or protest or march here and say Occupy Oakland. And a lot of those people, I would say, are against the occupation of Jewish settlements in Palestine. So it's not just semantics. It's not just a, a bunch of letters put together. I do believe that we have to occupy spaces. But I think that the process of occupying those spaces comes from the deep-seated, the profound knowledge, and that anchor that we're gonna turn into action that says, we really have to decolonize our language. We really have to decolonize our minds, what we do with our hands, what we speak with our mouths, where we take our feet, where we point our stare, what we think of the other, which is ourselves. So I'm gonna leave you with this. Meta Elder there, his name is Razzle Dazzle, and he taught us some songs that he told us that we could sing and take with us on our way. And then the young people there, also kept reteaching us and singing us the songs. So every time I sing this song, I always think of them. So I wanted to sing this song to remember them. Um, and this is a Miwok song from Chino Springs band. Yeah. So yo wanna say wanna. So yo wanna say wanna a system that does not like to share. So I'm going to put it down because last winter I rescued my uncle out there living off Pier 41 near Fisherman's Wharf. He had been out there eight months in the element and uh, he was swollen with his diabetes out there with his red face and wet and soggy. And the whole thing is about mental illness and not having enough of the health care, health, H-E-L-L-T-H care to take care of folks so that they can get in a better place in a better space. So this one I wrote for everybody out there in the struggle, whether they're still out there or they've been out there or they may end up out there, and it's called Living on Concrete. It's a little bit of floetics for you folks. But when you're stepping through the downtown, looking around, you see the down of humanity. Who was once somebody's baby living down on the concrete street on the ground? Do you dare to care? Well, say what you want to say. Step on stair, double standard mind will think it's not my problem. This is where you got it wrong. Think you're strong, move along, but it's conscious lying there. What it is, what it is, what it is, living on concrete. Call it whatever you want to call it. At a distance, but in reality, it's a casualty of a capitalist existence. Through the food chain of command, it's the plan of the man. Humility is many things. It is understanding that even if you know a lot or have been formally educated in many things, you still have much to learn. It is learning to be silent when you normally always speak. It is learning to move slowly when you normally only move very fast. It is listening carefully and then listening even more carefully. It is being in communities, sharing space rather than taking space. It is being mindful, careful, and loving about the peoples in struggle who were there before you ever got there.